very much and good morning to everyone. I understand the state law currently requires that the following announcement be made at the beginning of every remote council session. Due to the current public health emergency, City Council is currently meeting remotely. We are using Microsoft Teams to make this remote meeting possible. Instructions for how the public may view the meeting and offer public comment are included in the state meeting notice that was published in the Daily News, Inquirer, and Legal Intelligentsia, and can also be found on phlcouncil.com. I now note that the hour has come. The clerk will please call the roll to take attendance. Members that are in attendance, please indicate that you are present uh, or whatever you may say choose and when your name is called to ensure that your image is displayed on the screen. Mr. Decker, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Good morning, Council President, colleagues, and the City of Philadelphia. Good morning. Good morning. Councilwoman Brooks. Good morning, Council President, colleagues. Um, I am present. Good morning. Councilman Dom. Good morning, Council President, colleagues, and the City of Philadelphia. Good morning. Councilwoman Gautier. Good morning, President. Good morning. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues, and good morning, Philadelphia. Good morning. Councilman Green. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Council staff. Good morning um, to the city of Philadelphia, where it's always sunny. Good morning. Councilwoman Gim. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues. I am present. Good morning. Councilman Heenan. Good morning, Council President, and good morning, colleagues. Good morning. Councilman Johnson. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues. Prayers goes out to all families who have lost loved ones to gun violence. Good morning. Councilman Jones. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Philadelphia. Good morning. Councilman O. Councilman O'Neill. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Councilwoman Parker. Good morning, Mr. President and colleagues in Philadelphia. Good morning. Councilwoman Kenone Sanchez. Good morning, Council President and colleagues. Good morning. Councilman Squilla. Good morning, Council President and colleagues present. Good morning. Councilman Thomas. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning to the listening public. Good morning. Council President Clark. Good morning to everyone. Uh, we've established a quorum. The council will now come to order. To give our invocation this morning, the chair recognizes Pastor Edmund T. Shirell of the Mount, Mount Enon Baptist Church. He is here today as the guest of Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson. I would ask that all members and guests to please bow your heads for the invocation. Pastor, <clears throat> please proceed. Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Gracious Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, your wisdom, and your support as we begin this meeting. We thank you for each city council member gathered here today. We acknowledge the many burdens they carry into this work. We pray that you would guide them by your wisdom, support them by your power, and keep them pure in heart. You name us today in the bond of love, keep us faithful to all that is true. And we pray that you enable this leadership to uphold the right of others. Do not allow them to be corrupted with fear or favor. So we ask today for guidance in this meeting. Show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. And then, oh God, we pray in humility and understanding that we are not competent in and of ourselves to handle the increasing gun violence that has overtaken our city. So we look to you 
to be our help in a time of trouble. We pray for the residents of our city. We grieve with those that grieve in this city, remembering those who we have lost. Bless the work that is before this city council today. May every decision they make, every phone call that they pick up, every email that they respond to, may it be done with the spirit of excellence. Turn us again and open our hearts and remind us of the truth of Jeremiah that in the welfare of the city, we will find our own welfare. And so in all we do and all we say, may we seek the welfare of the city of Philadelphia. This is your servant's prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. We really appreciate your support, and your spiritual guidance this morning. Uh, we really need it. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> Council President, I just want to interrupt to say that I am present. <laughs> Good morning, Councilman O. Let the record reflect the Councilman O is present today. Thank you very much, Council President. Our next order of business is the approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, May 13, 2021, and the chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Mute, you on mute, Squilla. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Majority Leader, for your guidance. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting on Thursday, May 13th, 2021 be approved. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and probably second that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, May 13th, 2021 stand approved. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it, and the journal is approved. And our next order of business is request for leave of absence. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Sherelle Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the members of council, there are no requests for leaves of absence today. Thank you, Chair. Thanks to Councilwoman. Our next order of business is communications. Um, Mr. Decker, can you please read the messages from the mayor and any other communications that you may have in your possession? Yes, Mr. President. From the mayor to the president and members of the council of the city of Philadelphia, I am pleased to advise you that on May 19, 2021, I signed the following bill, which was passed by council at its session on May 6, 2021. Bill number 210139AA. And I am submitting herewith for the consideration of your honorable body. A resolution confirming the reappointment of Barbara Adams as a member of the board of the Philadelphia Energy Authority to serve in the term ending January 1, 2025 and a resolution confirming the appointment of Natalia Dominguez as a member of the Board of the Philadelphia Energy Authority to serve in the term ending January 1, 2027, and a resolution confirming the reappointment of Barbara Moore as a member of the Board of the Philadelphia Energy Authority to serve in the term ending January 1, 2024, and a resolution confirming the reappointment of E. Mitchell Swan as a member of the Board of the Philadelphia Energy Authority to serve in the term ending January 1, 2026, and an ordinance amending chapter 9600 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Service and Other Businesses to modify the requirements to operate a self-service laundry. And an ordinance authorizing the Director of Planning and Development on behalf of the city to file applications with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for a Community Development Block Grant to file applications to participate in the Home Investment Partnership Program and the Emergency Solutions Grant Program and to apply for a Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS grant. all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. Our next order of business is the introduction of bills and resolutions. <clears throat> and by way of a reminder, we are asking that all resolutions, including privilege resolution, be placed on a final passage calendar for our next session of council, unless they are being referred to committee. Uh, in our current remote environment, this procedure will provide an appropriate opportunity for public comment. Uh, I wanna thank you in advance for your anticipated cooperation. Uh, Mr. Decker, will you please read the titles of the legislation that's being offered today from by our members? Councilwoman Parker offers four bills on behalf of Council President Clark entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Cecil B. Moore Avenue, 20th Street, Oxford Street, and 21st Street. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Thompson Street, Extended, 6th Street, Girard Avenue, Percy Street, Harper Street, and 13th Street. 
and an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Penelope Code entitled Zoning and Planning to revise certain provisions of Chapter 14-500 entitled Overlay Zoning Districts by amending the NCP North Central Philadelphia Overlay District and an ordinance amending Chapter 14-900 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Signs by providing for new sign controls entitled 1900 Market Street Digital Display Sign Regulations. Those four bills will be referred to the appropriate committee. On her own behalf, Councilwoman Parker offers two resolutions entitled a resolution recognizing and congratulating Dwayne H. Bum on his retirement and 25 years of distinguished service to the City of Philadelphia Department of Commerce. Next week's calendar. And a resolution honoring the life and legacy of James V. Nixon Jr. and recognizing his impact on the Philadelphia arts and culture community. Next week's calendar. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson offers four resolutions on behalf of Council President Clark entitled a resolution confirming the reappointment of Barbara Adams as a member of the board of the Philadelphia Energy Authority serving the term ending January 1, 2025. Next week's calendar. And a resolution confirming the appointment of Natalia Dominguez as a member of the board of the Philadelphia Energy Authority to serve in the term ending January 1, 2027. Calendar. And a resolution confirming the reappointment of Barbara Moore as a member of the Board of the Philadelphia Energy Authority to serve in the term ending January 1, 2024. Next, Campbell. And a resolution confirming the reappointment of E. Mitchell Swan as a member of the Board of the Philadelphia Energy Authority to serve in the term ending January 1, 2026. Next, please, Campbell. And on her own behalf, Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson offers a resolution urging support for Pennsylvania House Bills 1204, 1206. 806 and 244 focused on addressing disparities in education, strengthening career and technical education, and creating workforce development opportunities. Next week's calendar. Councilman Jones offers two bills and started an ordinance authorizing non accessory parking on the premises located at 4422 through 24 Ridge Avenue. Per the committee. And an ordinance amending Chapter 12 2700 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Permit Parking Districts by amending the boundaries of Permit Parking District 16. For committee. Councilman Johnson offers one bill entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 14 1000 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Historic Preservation to establish a temporary demolition moratorium with respect to properties in the area of Christian Street between Broad and 20th Streets. For the committee. Councilwoman Canona Sanchez and Councilwoman Gautier offer an, an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philippi Code entitled Zoning and Planning by revising certain provisions of Chapter 14702 entitled Floor Area, Height and Housing Density Bonuses and by making related changes. For the committee. Councilman Green offers one bill on behalf of Council President Clark entitled an ordinance authorizing the Director of Planning and Development on behalf of the city to file applications with the United States Department of Housing and Develop Housing and Urban Development for a community development block grant, to file applications to participate in the Home Investment Partnership Program and the Emergency Solutions Grant Program, and to apply for housing opportunities for persons with AIDS grant. For the committee. Uh, Councilman Green offers on his own behalf two bills entitled an ordinance approving the amendment of the fiscal 2021 capital budget providing for expenditures for the capital purposes of the Philadelphia Gas Works, including the supplying of funds and connection therewith, subject to certain constraints and conditions. For the committee. And an ordinance approving the fiscal year 2022 capital budget providing for expenditures for the capital purposes of the Philadelphia Gas Works, including the supplying of funds and connection therewith subject to certain certain constraints and conditions. For the committee. Councilwoman Gautier offers three bills and titled an ordinance establishing a parking regulation in the vicinity of Fraser Street and Spruce Street, Ludlow Street and South 28, 58th Street, Udall Street and Larchwood Avenue, Reinhard and South 47th Street, South 48th Street and Reinhardt Street, Bering Street and North 32nd Street, Brandywine Street and North 34th Street, Hamilton Street and North 35th Street, Haverford Avenue and North 32nd Street, Haverford Avenue and North 40th Street, 
Wallace Street and North 33rd Street, Mandela Way and North 46th Street, Mount Vernon Street and North 33rd Street, Preston Street and Bering Street, St. Malachy's Way and North 46th Street, Spring Garden Street and North 40th Street, North 31st Street and Hamilton Street, Sansom and South 49th Street, South 61st Street and Walnut Street, Irving and South 51st Street, Ruby Street and Market Street, Pine Street and South 46th Street, Mount Vernon Street and North 32nd Street, North 42nd Street and Bering Street, and State Street and Palatine Avenue. Third committee. And an ordinance to amend the, the master plan for the University of Pennsylvania by areas of land located within an area bounded by Chestnut Street, 33rd Street, Ludlow Street, and 34th Street. For the committee. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Civic Center Boulevard, University Avenue, Spruce Street, and 34th Street. For the committee. Councilman Scuola offers on behalf of Council President Clark an ordinance amending Chapter 9600 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Service and Other Businesses to modify the requirements to operate a self-service laundry. And on his, own, on his own behalf, Councilman Scuola offers an ordinance amending Chapter 14500 of the Philadelphia Zoning Code entitled Overlay Zoning Districts by creating a new section entitled HHC, Heliport Hazard Control Overlay District. And, and in the ordinance amending the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Allegheny Avenue, Collins Street, Westmoreland Street, and Tulip Street. <laughs> Councilwoman Bass offers one bill and one resolution entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Broad Street, Erie Avenue, Hunting Park Avenue, Wissahickon Avenue, Railroad Right-of-Way, Clarissa Street, Juniata Street, Germantown Avenue, Hunting Park Avenue, and Roosevelt Boulevard. For the committee. And a resolution supporting the All Faiths Vaccination Campaign's efforts to achieve vaccination equity by hosting vaccination clinics in Philadelphia's underserved black and brown neighborhoods. Next week, there are no other bills or resolutions being offered today by the members, Mr. President. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Decker. That concludes uh, our introduction and bills and resolutions. Um, the chair, Councilwoman Parker. Chair, Councilwoman Parker. Yes, Mr. President, I'm here. Can you take the helm for like three minutes? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure, Mr. President and Council uh, Member Jones. Um, okay, because the next is reports from committee, um, Mr. President, and so we'll just move accordingly, okay? Yes. So the next or the next order of business is reports from committees. Um, acting as chair, um, I recognize uh, Council Member Jones for a report from the Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ooh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the Committee of the Whole reports one bill with a favorable um, recommendation. So one bill, um, Council Member Jones, and six resolutions? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The Chief Clerk will please read the report. Yes, Madam Chair. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee of the Whole, to which was referred Bill Number 210074, entitled An Ordinance Repealing Chapter 21200 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Police Advisory Board, and replacing it with a new Chapter 211200 that reconstitutes and renames the Board as the Citizens Police Oversight Commission, and as authorized by the Charter, provides for the Commission's appointment, the powers and duties of the Commission, and the manner in which the Commission and other officers, employees, and agencies shall fulfill their respective responsibilities with respect to the Commission. 
And resolution number 210098, entitled A Resolution Appointing Chris Barnes to the Board of Directors for the South Street Head House District. And resolution number 210099, entitled A Resolution Appointing Katrina Johnston Zimmerman to the Board of Directors for the South Street Head House District. And resolution number 210100, entitled A Resolution Appointing Adam Zakin to the Board of Directors for the South Street Head House District. And resolution number 210101, entitled the resolution appointing Allison Harvey Hendman to the Board of Directors for the South Street Head House District. And resolution number 210102, entitled the resolution appointing Monica Thompson to the Board of Directors for the South Street Head House District. And resolution number 210103, entitled the resolution appointing Adam Shapiro to the Board of Directors for the South Street Head House District. Respectful reports, it has considered the same and returns the attached bill and resolutions to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. The chair recognizes council member Jones. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 210074. Is Second. There a Second. All those in. It has been moved. It has been moved and properly seconded that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 210074. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those, op those opposed, the aye have it, and this bill will be placed on our first reading for today. <coughs> Resolution numbers 210098. 210099, 2010100, 2101001, 2101102, and 21010103 will be placed on the final passage calendar for our next session of council. And I now see our council president has returned. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. Sorry for the brief confusion. He keeps us he keeps us sharp every now and then. <laughs> just to see if we pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, council members. I appreciate it. Uh, just a, had a slight uh, little quick thing I had to deal with. Thank you. Uh, chair now recognizes Councilwoman Bass for a report on the Committee on Public Health and Human Services. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> that the rules to have had have been deemed to have had its first reading and those bills will be placed on our second reading and final passage calendar at our next session of council uh, there are no additional bills on our first reading calendar so the chair recognizes councilwoman parker for the purpose of calling up bills and resolutions on the final passage calendar today Thank you, Mr. President. The following resolutions and bills are being called up from the second reading and final passage calendars today. Uh, they are numbers 210375, 210452, 210453, 210454, 210455, 210456, 210458, 210460 and 210360. Mr. President, all other resolutions and bills are being held. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. Um, we will next now move to our public comment. Um, uh, but we, before we proceed with the consideration of the public comment, we're going to take a brief five to 10 minute recess to give our technology professionals an opportunity uh, to connect our speakers um, for testimony today. So we'll take a brief, brief break.
Thank you and good morning again. Um, now that everyone is connected to the meeting and before considering resolutions and bills we have before us today, uh, we will consider the public comment. It will go as follows. Public comment must concern matters of the second reading and final passes calendar for possible action at a session of council. A speaker on any of those matters must sign up in order to testify. You must call 215-686-3406 by 3 p.m. the day before the session to sign up for public comment. When you call, we will take your name, phone number, the number of the legislative item you are commenting on, and whether you are in support of or uh, in opposition of the legislation and add your name to the list. We will telephone each person on the list during the council session and invite them to our remote meeting. They will each have three minutes to speak. However, time limit may vary from time to time, but today I think we're in a position to provide three minutes. Uh, in order to be fair to all those wishing to speak, though, I do intend to hold faithfully to the established time limit. Once invited to the meeting and asked to begin your testimony, a timer will be started. We will monitor your remaining time throughout your testimony, and when there are 30 seconds remaining to your time, you will be reminded of this. Once your allotted time has passed, you will be asked to conclude your remarks. Shortly thereafter, you will be muted and disconnected from the remote meeting. I also reserve the right to limit the number of speakers where repetitious comments is being made, the same subject matter, and to limit the scope of the testimony to only certain items on the agenda during the emergency, which could affect callbacks for public comment at the meeting. Uh, please be aware that this public meeting is being recorded so because the meeting is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. So by continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. I will now ask Mr. Decker, our chief clerk, to please read the name of our first speaker. Yes, Mr. President. The first speaker we have today is Destiny Jackson, commenting on 210456. Good morning. I'll just state your name for the record and please proceed with your testimony. I want to thank you all so much for honoring me for this award. Um, it has been an honor to um, to be um, an award recipient. Um, wow, I'm going to be, I plan to attend Spelman College this upcoming fall semester. Um, with me having over 50 college acceptances, I've, I have approximately 56 college acceptances, and I plan to go to some to double major with political science on a pre-law track and communications and media with a long-term goal to run for president. Um, I'm currently fundraising money to, um, to make sure that I am able to reach my goal so that I can be able to attend Spelman College with um, the, um, overcoming challenges that I face every day with being type 1 diabetic and being a youth in foster care. It has been a long journey, but I just want to thank the city of Philadelphia for, you know, being able to provide opportunities and, um, and wow, it's just an honor to be able to, you know, move forward and be able to make a change in the world. Thank you so much. Um, it is our honor to honor you uh, for the awesome, awesome achievements, and we look forward to many, many years of notoriety. Um, and as soon as we can figure out a way uh, to forward our mail-in ballot, uh, give us a designation and the time frame for which you won to run for president, and I'm sure a lot of us will be prepared to, to mail it in early. <laughs> Destiny, thank you so much, and, and, and God thank bless you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Decker. Uh, Next person. The next speaker is Sarah Clark Stewart, commenting on 210360. Good morning. I'll state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you. My name is Sarah Clark Stewart, and I am uh, calling in to uh, express my support for bill number 210360, which will name a dog park on the north side of Winter Street. Um, as the Rob Stewart Memorial Dog Park. Um, uh, Rob Stewart was my late husband, um, and I want to thank uh, City Council President and Hel Councilwoman Member Helen Gim for sponsoring this ordinance. I also want to thank the Parks, Re Recreation, and Cultural Affairs Committee for passing it um, a few weeks ago. Um, very quickly, as the ordinance lays out, um, Rob Stewart was an extraordinary citizen of Philadelphia um, who loved Philadelphia and our neighborhood, Logan Square, very, very much. And from the moment we moved here in 1995 and until his untimely death in 2011, 
He worked on many projects, all with the aim of improving Philadelphia and ensuring its future with high quality life for everyone. Um, And among his many accomplishments, he worked tirelessly to ensure that Logan Square thrived and grew and also retained its special character. And one of his particular dreams was um, that Logan Square continue to uh, attract and retain new families. And he wanted to very much build a dog park and a children's playground, which now, because made possible by Council President Clark, is actually about to happen. We hope that the dog park and children's play space on Winter Street will open in, uh, hopefully in June um, of this year. So I, I want to thank uh, the, the City Council for this ordinance and for naming the dog park um, in the memory of my late husband. Um, this wouldn't have been possible without their support. Um, and also just to know that how much Logan Square Neighborhood Association and my neighbors um, are excited and thrilled to be able to have this dog park named after my late husband. Point of so inf- Thank you very much. And, and just quickly, very much on behalf of my family, we, we deeply appreciate this honor. Point thank of- you. The chair, chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Yeah, Mr. Stewart cared about Center City, but he also cared about other places within the city of Philadelphia. He was a Renaissance man. He invented water purification systems. uh, And in fact, um, Mr. President, made me have to tailor my suits. He said, I bought my suits off the rack too big and insisted, insisted that I see a tailor. And I thank him and his family for that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, Part of information, Council President. She recognizes Councilman Jones. I'm sorry, that's Councilman Johnson. I'm sorry. Thank you, Council President. I just wanted to also just follow up um, and commend you and commend Helen and all the council for um, supporting uh, this ordinance because in honoring the life of um, Mr. Stewart, because when I first decided to make the transition uh, from state representative to city council, he was on the front line for me, like going to bat for me, um, had me in rooms that I haven't been in before and really helping me make that transition um, smooth. And so um, it's very fitting that we honor his life and legacy because he was a genuine and true person. And I've been around politics for a while, as all of us have been. And you know when you meet a rare breed when it comes to a person being sincere and passionate about just truly helping people for the sake of helping people. And so um, I just wanted to make sure I get that on the record because he's a truly dear um, and near um, to my heart because he's a part of how I became um, a council person representing not only just the council person representing the second councilmatic district, but the first African-American council person to represent the second councilmatic district. And he played a major role in making sure um, that I was supported and also inside those rooms that I haven't also um, had an opportunity to be introduced to it if it had not been for him. Thank you very much. And he was actually progressive before progressive became a progressive thing. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Chair recognizes Councilwoman again. <laughs> Chair recognizes Councilwoman again. Um, thank you so much, Council President. And, you know, originally I was going to wait. Um, uh, until the introduction, but it feels very fitting after Sarah's beautiful and very loving testimony to her late husband to hear all of our colleagues say so much about what Rob meant to the entire city of Philadelphia. He was a Philadelphian through and through. As Sarah said, he loved the city. He had a bigger vision of it. He invested in its infrastructure and he invested in its people. And I do want to extend my enormous gratitude to you, Council President, um, for doing um, this tribute uh, to a wonderful person. And his legacy lives on in Sarah and his and his daughters. So um, just very grateful for this moment and in remembrance and holding precious people who've come before us, who've done so much. Thank you very much, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I want to join the uh, chorus of my colleagues and just um, saying what a great guy Rob was. And, um, you know, whenever I think of Rob Stewart, I always smile. 
and I smile because he was someone who brought something to the table and it was about helping people and it was positive. It was never any foolishness. It was never anything that wasn't going to make a difference in the lives of the people of Philadelphia, especially those who need it the most. So, um, you know, it's my honor to be in, in any way, shape or form, uh, play a role in helping this happen. And, um, you know, to, to Sarah and uh, family, um, I thank you for sharing, Rob, with us. We thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, there will be a ceremony um, at the park in about a month, so we'll make sure everybody gets an invitation. Um, thank you. Um, that's it, Mr. Decker. Um, the next speaker is Drew Murray, commenting on 210360. Uh, good morning. Um, state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. <clears throat> Thanks, Council President. Uh, this is Drew Murray. I'm a board member of the Logan Square Neighborhood Association and, and former president. I'm here to uh, support the resolution in naming the Winter Street Dog Park uh, in memory of my, my friend Rob Stewart, uh, Bill, resolution number 210360. Uh, Rob was a friend uh, and a mentor to me. Um, he was also a former president of the Logan Square Neighborhood Association. He did so much for our community. I think it might have even been you, council president, who called him the 18th member of, of city council because everyone knew him um, and everyone in the community knew him. Council president, I know you've heard me say this story and I know Sarah's heard the story, but I call, I used to call uh, Rob and I still call Rob the George Bailey of our community. He really touched people in so many ways that seem small at the moment, but had long lasting effects on their lives. I know for me first, personally, he convinced me not to leave the city of Philadelphia. I was heading to, to, to the main line back to where my family was and where I grew up. And he was the one to convince me not to leave. He was the one that also called story school to convince them to let my daughter in. He, he always denied that, but I, I know he did it. Um, so he had such a profound effect on my life and so many people. And I think this will be such an honor for him to have this dog park named for him because it was one of the last things he actually asked me to help him with right before he passed. He said, Drew, I want to get a dog park in this community. You know, can you help me? And, uh, you know, I know it was one of Sarah's dreams and, and one of my dreams to see that this comes to fruition. So I want to thank you, Council President, number one, for helping provide the funds for this. Um, and I want to thank you and my friend, Councilwoman Gim, for, for making this resolution to to name this park in memory of Rob, it'll, it'll be an incredible honor to his legacy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Decker. The next speaker is Sakri Abdullayev, commenting on 210460. Um, good morning. Um, <clears throat> state your name for the record, please, and proceed with your testimony. Good morning to all. I'm, uh, my name is Sakri Abdullayev. I'm calling in to support the resolution 210460. And I want to thank uh, specifically Councilman O for introducing the resolution and for the rest of the council for hearing. I've been a resident of Philadelphia since I was seven. I uh, moved to the Northeast Philly when I was uh, seven with my family. I've lived here pretty much all my life. I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in 2019. And I consider Philadelphia to be my home and I intend to call it my home for the rest of my life. Today's subject is important to me um, and close to me, much like it is to the growing number of Azerbaijanis that live here. We've always known the city of Philly as a city of brotherly love. We chose to live here because we believe that the community here is vibrant, caring, and defined by the many communities of different ethnic and national backgrounds. I remember walking through Benjamin Franklin Parkway throughout my entire childhood and young adult years and always being inspired and proud of the different nationalities living here. Philly really embraces its diverse composition of people and wants them to succeed. And seeing all of those flags here signified that to me. Um, it's also disappointing to me to not to see my own country representing that parkway. As a community of Azerbaijanis in Philly, we want to be able to be represented as a part of the city of Philadelphia and have our voices heard. Though we are a small population currently in Philadelphia, we are constantly growing and we do contribute a lot to the development of our city. 
many of us work or own businesses directly within the city, and we're constantly hosting many cultural events with hundreds of Azeris uh, and other nationalities attending and working with other minority groups to make the city place a better place for all. We are proud Philadelphians and Azerbaijanis, and we are continuing to grow. We want to see ourselves representative, and that's why we hope to see our flag flying across Benjamin Franklin Parkway. And we hope to do this with your help, and we truly appreciate the effort in helping us put this forward. Um, we, are, um, we want the city of Philadelphia and the world to know that we are proud of Azerbaijanis living in the greatest city in the world. Um, we think that this will go really a long way uh, to show Philly as one of these vibrant, um, multicultural, and diverse uh, communities. I want to thank you all for your time and allowing me to sh share my perspective today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. We appreciate it. The next speaker is Leila Salehli, commenting on 210460. Good morning. Um, Good morning. State your name. Good Good morning. My name is uh, Leila Salili Horgan. I'm here today um, in support of Resolution 210460, calling on the city of Philadelphia to include the flag of the Republic of Azerbaijan in the display of international flags along Benjamin Franklin Parkway. And again, thank you to council members O. Bass, Brooks, Dome, Green, and Skira for, for including our ethnic minority group into Philadelphia's cultural, multi-ethnic environment here. Um, much like Fahri sort of already introduced a common sentiment is I also came to Philadelphia in 1995 as an international student at the time to Drexel University. Haven't left our city since. I married a through and through Philadelphian and the city became a home for me and my family now. But I do remember that time I walked down our beautiful Ben Franklin Parkway, saw all those wave, flags waving in the wind. I searched for a flag of my country. I didn't see it. But I thought, wow, perhaps they never heard of Azerbaijan. At the time, it was just a newly independent state uh, breaking from Soviet Union. But I hope that soon we can bring um, Azerbaijani flags to the city. It did take years of understanding how, uh, how our city works to build up our community here. Uh, we tried for many years, unfortunately not successfully, but I think today is different. Um, the moratorium has been lifted. Philadelphia is such a multi-ethnic and multi multicultural city today, most importantly. 25 years later, we have a very strong and thriving Azerbaijani community in Philadelphia. Azerbaijani Americans in Philadelphia have cultural representation. Um, you'll hear from our next speaker, John Luis Azeri, who represents Azerbaijani Society of America in our city. We hold events and work with many other minority groups to make our city a better place. Um, I, for example, also represent uh, a U.S. Azerbaijani network in our city, a grassroots advocacy organization whose mission is to educate our voters about American political system and give the tools to be an integral part of American democracy. Philadelphia is the birthplace of that democracy. And we as immigrants to this country, to this city, want to be represented along with many other nations around the world by sharing the culture of Azerbaijan, our birthplace, with our new home, Philadelphia. I ask you to please help us do that today. Please vote to include the flag of Azerbaijan in Philadelphia's beautiful display of international flags. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you so much for your Thank testimony. You so much, Appreciate it. The next speaker is Sabir Abdullayev, commenting on 210460. Good morning. Uh, good morning, council members. Uh, my name is Sabir Abdullayev. Um, I want to thank you for um, looking at resolution 20, um, 210460 um, to raise the Azerbaijani flag on the parkway. Um, I, I, my family came here in 1999. Um, I have two brothers, they are younger than me, and my parents who are older. And we came here from Moscow, but we, I, we, we came um, 
from Azerbaijan, and I was born in Baku originally. Uh, I lived there until I was eight. Uh, when we came here from Moscow, right, uh, Philadelphia became home for us, right? We went, um, we have ha house here now, two houses, the whole family. We all went to schools here. Um, I went to Drexel, my brothers went to Temple. Um, we all work in Philadelphia and in Pennsylvania. Um, so we made our home here. And, um, you know, when I used to work, I, I used to live on Spring Garden next to the uh, art museum, a couple blocks away. And I worked in Center City, across of City Hall. I would wa walk by the parkway every day, and it would actually bother me each day when I would pass and I'd not see the Azerbaijani flag there. But I knew time will come, and, um, you know, that time is now. And we're here to ask you to approve raising a flag of this country that was um, an independent democracy, right? The first independent democ democracy in a secular um, Muslim world, it became in 1918, right? And in 1919, the um, women had right to vote and run for the office, right? And just to, as a comparison, that was a year before it was um, available here in the United States for nationally for women to vote. So imagine a nation of Benjamin Franklin in 1918, um, thousand miles from, from away from here. Um, and that, that's who, who we represent, you know, that's what we want to um, establish here um, and, and work here towards the democracy and our common values. And I appreciate your um, listening to us about this issue. It's very important for us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your testimony. We appreciate it. The next speaker is Tomres Azeri, commenting on 210460. Good morning. Uh, yes, good, good morning. Yeah. Yes, good morning. Well, My name is Tomres Azeri. Good morning, Mr. Council President, and thank you very much for the opportunity to address you. Our profound gratitude to all the members of the council who are serving our city with distinction. We are grateful each to each and every one of you. I'm in support for resolution 210460 to include the flag of Azerbaijan in the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. I am president of Azerbaijan Society of America, the oldest pan-Azerbaijani grassroots organization in the United States representing Azerbaijani Americans. Founded in 1957 by the first wave of immigrants to the United States, it is the first organization in the world to represent Azerbaijanis outside of their homeland. Our community has grown significantly over the years, especially here in Philadelphia. We work with a wide range of organizations and communities across the country to engage Azerbaijanis around the nation. We work closely with Turkish, Israeli, Pakistani, and many other communities in the nation. First Republic of Azerbaijan was established in 1918, secular Muslim democracy, very first in the world. Unfortunately, within two years, it fell under Soviet rule. When the Soviet Union finally collapsed in 1991, Azerbaijan was the first nation to regain their independence. While being under the Soviet rule over 70 years, Azerbaijani flag was banned in the Soviet Azerbaijan. But in America, we were raising the flag of Azerbaijan because America gave us the freedom to do so. We are proud Americans and always will be grateful. Azerbaijan is a staunch ally of the United States. Azerbaijan unconditionally supported America's anti-terrorist campaign immediately in the wake of the September 11th tragedy to ensure the safety of all Americans in, and U.S. installations in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijani soldiers fought next to American soldiers in Kosovo, Afghanistan, and Iraq 
Azerbaijan opened its doors to American businesses, and today many Americans call Azerbaijan their home. Seeing the Azerbaijani flag among the, among the other banners of iconic Benjamin Franklin Parkway will be a reminder to all of us the friendship America and Azerbaijan continue to share and enjoy. I thank you for listening to me, and I am grateful for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. We appreciate it. The next speaker is Sharice Lee, commenting on 210434. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning, everyone. My name is Sharice Lee. And I'm calling on the city of Philadelphia to implement minimum force training for all law enforcement officers. Whereas minimum force training provides law enforcement officers with the physical skills and mental perspective to use no force or the least amount of force required when faced with the confrontation under stress. And whereas minimum force training is a valuable tool for law enforcement officers and civilians alike. And whereas police use of force and training protocols are particularly salient following high profile incidents of overly aggressive officer involved confrontations and unattended shootings, and whereas, as a result of George Floyd's death, there is a national push to reform laws and protocols pertaining to the police conduct and liability, and whereas some of these efforts are questionable and may result in unattended consequences that increase crime and injury, and whereas minimal force training can reduce the number the tragedies by balancing lethal force responses with more appropriate responses based upon the circumstance. And whereas law enforcement officials in neighboring Bucks and Delaware counties have already begun exploring implementation and of minimal force training as a component of its mandatory police officer training. And whereas in the best interest of its officers and the public, The Philadelphia Police Department should implement minimal force training to complement traditional lethal force training. And whereas in order to implement minimal force training, the city will need to establish training programs for the police department, establish parameters for how officers will be expected to complete the training and define administrative regulations for receiving compensatory time or other reimbursements for completing the training. Now, therefore, be it. Resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that it thereby calls on the City of Philadelphia to implement minimal force training for all law enforcement officers. This has been introduced by Council Member O as of May 6, 2021. I should recently wholeheartedly support this resolution number 210434 because, in order to maintain any professional field, you must adhere to the mandatory required recertification procedures. Just as the fast food employee must recertify their safe serve license every few years, as well as the attorney must recertify his license six months prior to the expiration date. This resolution, which has been put in place, not only protects us, but our children by teaching them how to be responsible adults because they are our future leaders. Thank you so much for your time, and everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for your testimony. Appreciate it. Thank you. The next speaker is April McBride, commenting on 210434. Good morning. Good morning. Just state your name for the record. April McBride. Good morning, Council Member President and Council Members. I'm in favor of Resolution 210434, implementing minimal force training for all law enforcement agencies. This resolution that has been presented today by Council Member O is extremely needed in the city of Philadelphia, especially in the impoverished urban neighborhoods where police brutality and police fatality, um, where are, there are much higher occurrences. Example given, the fatal shooting of Walter Wallace Jr. in 2020 in, 2020 in West Philadelphia. Mr. Wallace was having a mental health crisis, as his mother stated, and cried out to the police officers involved. But Mr. Wallace's life was lost because of a lethal gunshot from the police officers that were there on the scene. Minority men, women, bo- men, women, boys, and girls are already looked upon as immediate threats, or, which is unfair and unjust. With that being said, to minimize police brutality and fatality, this resolution is very crucial to, <clears throat> to lives of all citizens of Philadelphia, of all races, especially for the minority communities. 
once a person is deceased, they cannot come back to life. And to die by lethal force by police, where the situation could have been resolved by minimal force, is not acceptable and the damage cannot be undone. I ask you today to support and pass into the Bill of Law here in Philadelphia, Resolution Number 210434. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Appreciate it. The next speaker is Johnson Jajut, commenting on 210434. Good morning. Let's state your name for the record and proceed with the test. Morning, uh, morning, Council President and morning, Council Members. I am Johnson Jajut. I'm a current resident of Philadelphia. I'm also a mixed martial arts instructor. I've been instructing uh, law enforcement and uh, other parts of private sector for so many years now. And I can go into the ups and downs uh, throughout the years of the acts of law enforcement, but let's, I want to present it to you guys as what they really are. They're people, you know, they're everyday people that have anxiety just like us, get angry just like us, get happy just like us, and also go through trials and tribulations just like us. You know, they're everyday people, and on top of that, they, des they decide one day to serve and protect our community. You know, they're everyday people that are expected to rise above and make critical, hard decisions in hostile situations without the proper training. You know, it is important, and I fully support Resolution 210434 that was presented by David O, council member, that it's very important. It's very important that our, these people that choose to serve and protect our community are, are presented with an opportunity to have a choice to be able to implement minimum force training. You know, they, it, I agree that it should be mandatory where these people are trained to deal with hostile situations on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's no other way to do it other than being in a controlled environment where you're trained mentally and physically on how to deal with hostile situations. How are people expected to do that if they're not constantly trained for it? Do you expect doctors to do great surgeries without constantly practicing? No. How can it be expected of a person who chooses to serve or protect our community to rise above situations in a very hostile environment without the proper training? It would only help them become safer. It would help them, it would help them basically protect our community in a better way, help people more comfortable around them. It just would help in every way possible, every way possible. Help improve their lives, making sure they're going home, making the right decisions, and help the community around them. It is very important, very, very important that they are committed to bettering themselves, not just physically, but mentally. You know, it goes that far. It goes that far into their training. And also here, there's opposition to it too, as well, as there is already some minimum force training. And if that's the case, would we be where we are today if there was, you know? And if, it, there, if there is some type of training, is it good enough? Would we be having this conversation today? And that's something we need to ask ourselves, like what is missing and what do we need to implement? And this is one of them. I fully support it. Thank you for hearing me out. Thanks. And I conclude. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Appreciate it. There are no other speakers in the public comment list, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Now that concludes our public comment session. We will now consider the bills and resolutions on the second reading and final passage calendar today. Um, Mr. Decker, please read the tab of resolution number 210375. A resolution calling on the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration to take action to prevent the transportation of liquefied natural gas through the City of Philadelphia and further calling on the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and or the Army Corps of Engineers to perform an environmental impact statement of the proposed docking facility in Gibbstown, New Jersey. 
Chair recognizes Councilwoman Brooks. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that resolution number 210375 be withdrawn. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the resolution number 210375 be withdrawn. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Resolution number 210375 has been withdrawn. Mr. Decker, please read the title of resolution number 210452. A resolution also naming the 1600 block of South Street Ronald K. Washington Way to honor Ron Washington, founder, founding owner of the legendary Ron's Ribs for his legacy of dedicated service to the South Philadelphia community. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Johnson for a motion. Thank you, Council President. Council President, I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and probably second that the resolution be adopted. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. Mr. Decker, please read the title of resolution number 210-453. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority. Deeds conveying fee simple title to certain city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on, situated in the second council Manic district of the city of Philadelphia, and further authorizing the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority to transfer to the Philadelphia Land Bank fee simple title to such properties. Chair Kim recognizes Councilman Johnson for a motion. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. We move to property second. All in favor of resolution, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. Mr. Decker, please read the title of resolution number 210-454. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Fall Fair Redevelopment Authority, deeds conveying fee simple title, to certain city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements they're on, situated in the third council manic district of the city, and further authorizing the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority to transfer to the Philadelphia Land Bank fee simple title to such properties. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gautier for a motion. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved to probably second. All in favor of the adoption of the resolution indicate by saying aye. 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 Who's opposed? Aye, have it. And that resolution is adopted. Mr. Decker, please read the title of resolution number 210-455. A resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of 5559 Locust Street, located in the third council manic district. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Gautier. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. Thank you. There's been moved and properly second that the resolution be adopted. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. Mr. Decker, we just have a resolution number 210-456. A resolution honoring and congratulating Destiny Jackson on her acceptance into 50 colleges, 50 plus colleges while experiencing homelessness, foster care, and participating in several extracurricular leadership positions. Chair recognizes Councilman Thomas for a motion on the resolution. Thank you, Council President. I'm going to thank Destiny for joining us today, and I uh, move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. Mr. Decker, please read the resolution. So my answer the phone. 210-458. A resolution honoring and congratulating Frank Stephan Spera on the occasion of his retirement from the Pennsylvania State Police Bureau of Liquor Control Enforcement. Chair recognizes Councilman Squillow for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and probably second that the resolution be adopted. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. Um, Mr. Decker, please read the title of resolution number 210-460. A resolution calling on the city of Philadelphia to include the flag of the Republic of Azerbaijan and the display of international flags along the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman O for a motion. 
Thank you very much, Council President. I, I move that the uh, resolution be adopted. Second. It's been moved and probably second. That the resolution be adopted. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. Uh, Mr. Decker, please read the title of Bill number 210-360. An ordinance officially naming and designating the dog park located on the north side of Winter Street between 21st Street and 22nd Street in the city of Philadelphia as the Rob Stewart Memorial Dog Park. Thank you. This bill having been read on <clears throat> two different days, the question now, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Brooks. Aye. Councilman Dom. Aye. Councilwoman Gautier. Aye. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson. Aye. Councilman Green. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Quinone Sanchez. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilman Thomas. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye. The ayes are 17, the nays are zero. Majority of members present. Voting and affirms that the bill passes. Mr. Decker, do you have some additional resolution? I do not, Mr. President. Thank you very much. That completes our calendar for today. <clears throat> and prior to recognizing members regarding speeches, uh, I will note for the record at the time that we will use the chat feature available in Microsoft's team to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized. In order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used for this particular purpose. With that said, are there speeches on behalf of the minority? Um, uh, there have been none. Speeches on behalf of the majority. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I rise to salute an ordinance that was placed by Councilman Johnson. It is a moratorium on demolition in his district. I rise and I, I smiled a little bit when it was introduced because it reminded me about a book that I recommend all members of council read. It is called The Geography of Nowhere. And what the book basically is about is in construction, in modern haste to develop and sometimes overdevelop, neighborhoods are disappearing in the sense of their uniqueness, their history, their confirmation to region, um, architecture, and so on. And, and the book goes on to say, Mr. President, that in some parts of the United States now, if they blindfolded you, dropped you into a main street or a town, spun you around three times, you would not be able to identify where you were. There are historic sites in Philadelphia, such as City Hall, such as the Liberty Bell and, and the Art Museum and neighborhoods that have unique character, such as South Philly, such as Germantown, such as places like Ridge Avenue in my district that have historical and architectural relevance. We did a tour on Ridge Avenue once and I was with my staff and I pointed out a keystone that had 1714 on it. I said, well, that couldn't be the address. We are much further north. And what my staff, uh, Josh Cohen, was kind enough to point out to me, that was the year that that building was built. I say that to say that people like 
John Street, uh, and members of the Overbrook Farms community, members of Roxborough, and the Historic Society have pointed out that if we keep demolishing neighborhoods and erasing that, all of the neighborhoods will look the same. Front pull up uh, driveways to park, but you won't be able to get those rich brownstones in your district on Diamond Street and places that we have to protect. I've been around long enough, as Maria Sanchez points out, that I'm two minutes senior to her in seniority because my name starts with a J and hers with an S, and I get it. But I do know when we first came in, everybody wanted by right zoning. I can safely say that most of the communities we represent now regret that because anybody can just come up and put anything in a lot of our neighborhoods. And you and I share this, Mr. President, those multicolored corner stores that sell all kinds of paraphernalia that often have illegal gambling machines in them because they can put them up by right. So I salute you, colleague Johnson, for recognizing the historic nature of part of your district and share with you that a couple of generations back that I'm a South Philly guy from the peak. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, very poignant point. Uh, it is an issue and hopefully uh, with the designation of the new zoning code advisory commission, a uh, committee, special committee, uh, we can address that um, by virtue of um, recommended legislation and possibly try to change this um, in the very near future. But it has changed the character of neighborhoods across the city, not necessarily in a positive way. Thank you. Um, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Council Member Jones, thank you so very much um, for raising awareness about that important issue. You know how I feel about land use and zoning and protecting the quality and character um, of a neighborhood and not allowing anyone who doesn't live in a particular neighborhood to shame or guilt the people who've been there for so many generations for trying to hold on um, to that which they know is home. So thank you for raising awareness about that. Uh, Mr. President, on this morning, I did not expect a comment about this, but something happened that I witnessed firsthand this morning that I wanted to note for the record. Um, I proudly went to receive my uh, second shot this morning at the uh, Finley Recreation Center playground at Upsala Mansfield. My appointment was for 930, um, but I got there um, a little early. Um, the process, the structure was, it was so well organized. I didn't have to wait. Um, the Ed Snyder Hockey Foundation, along with Sunray Pharmacy, they are partnering with my office, Finley, and several others. And that's one of our neighborhood-based vaccination sites. And when I was there, my neighbor had asked me earlier this week, are walk-ins allowed? And I and I told her, yes, Mr. Mr. President. She said, I'm vaccinated and I'm going to bring my daughter. Now, she has two. But so I'm sitting in the back after you get the shot, you know, you have to sit in the area for 15 minutes and wait. And when she came in, she only had one daughter and it wasn't her elder daughter. It was her younger daughter, who I believe is about 14. And um, I waved my hand. I said, where, where is my girl talking about her other daughter? Her old her elder daughter decided that she did not want to be vaccinated. I wanted to use this opportunity, uh, Mr. President, to strongly encourage Philadelphians to continue on that track. I mean, I know you're hearing about when Philadelphia um, will be open. Um, you know, you've listened to Dr. Fauci and talking about, you know, the, the mask um, and, um, you know, what, what will happen in terms of processes and protocols. But now is not the time, PHL, to let up uh, on that. So, you know, Mr. President, I know I, along with all of us here in council, are going to continue encouraging our constituents to get vaccinated and Mr. President and all of our colleagues 
Um, I, I always feel good when I'm at our neighborhood based sites because Mr. President, the people when I walk when I walked in, the people were saying, Thanks so much that we don't have to go downtown. They were happy to like have a spot in the neighborhood. So I want to say thank you for that. I also wanted to say thank you to Council Member Isaiah Thomas for honoring destiny and um you know her her game changing uh trend setting and trailblazing acceptance to over 52 colleges now destiny chose spellman and i'm excited for her but i and when she said spellman i immediately got on and began um texting um uh philadelphia's uh spellman graduates one of them who's really active and that's Lori jones um, who is the president and CEO of Phil Abundance. And I said, well, Lori, what other Philadelphia Spelman grads are, are here? And she talked about Anika Nikki Hawkins from 6ABC, Dr. Sean Blue, who is a psychologist and a leader in the links, and a young woman um, who is a member of Enon Tabernacle Baptist yes. Church, Nicole Phillips, who just ran for judge in, in Montco uh, and was successful. So Destiny um, is, is going to be in good company. Um, we wish you well. And um, Mr. President, I'm glad Destiny said that she is setting her eyes on the big stage you know, for a president, right? And and not counsel right now, because let me tell you something, she's going to be ready and prepared when she graduates uh, uh, from Spelman. So Destiny, we wish you the best. And because we have Kamala Harris, um, who is there and who made history in her election, Destiny, you now know you can be what you can see, you know it's possible because you see what Kamala Harris has been able to achieve. And so I'm just really moved um, by her her story, her humble beginnings, and her, her willingness to overcome with the greatest resilience we can see in a person um, to achieve what many people may not have thought was her destiny because of her circumstances, but she arrived. So congratulations, Destiny, and thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Yes. Great, great achievement. Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, um, Council President. Um, I was not going to speak um, this after, this morning, um, just like Councilman Parker, but um, when she mentioned uh, Spelman College, I'd be remiss in not um, acknowledging that my sister uh, Dr. Valerie Green Amos is also a prior graduate of Spelman College. Uh, it's a phenomenal institution um, in Georgia, and uh, there's a number of great phenomenal Spelman women that uh, our majority leader um, acknowledge, and they also do provide you know, scholarships and other fundraising. So we definitely look forward to um, Destiny, and I thank Councilmember Thomas for um, his acknowledgement of that information. Um, also, um, I know Councilmember Jones has, has participated in, in the past event, um, but my understanding is that this Saturday is the Philly Vax John 2, um, which goes to the great comments that Councilmember and our majority leader Parker stated about getting vaccinated. Uh, that will be in Councilmember Jones's district, uh, the Dell Music Center, um, this Saturday, May 22nd from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, now, I'm not sure if Councilmember Jones will be getting on the wheels of steel with um, our DJ Gario and DJ Active, um, but I know he's got a lot of great skills in that regard. So once again, uh, following the great comments that our majority has stated, we need to get everyone to get vaccinated and that the Philly Vax John 2 will be at the Dell Music Center um, this Saturday, May 22nd from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And of course, they're working with the Black Doctors COVID-19 Consortium and Dr. A. Eli Stanford. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, uh, for bringing that to the attention. Um, um, thank you for that. And thank you, Councilman Parker. Um, COVID-19 is not over. Um, we got a briefing yesterday. I think we're probably at 50 percent yesterday. We we're 49 percent of eligible uh, individuals in the city vaccinated, that means that half the people in the city that are eligible are not vaccinated. So uh, we still must be vigilant. We still have to make sure that uh, we follow um, the updated guidelines, but we're asking people wherever possible, please, please get vaccinated so we can get back to normal as, as quickly as possible. Chair recognizes Councilman Don. 
Oh, thank you, Council President. <clears throat> and I just want to uh, speak today about something I feel very strongly about. And that is, I believe we're at a turning point for the city of Philadelphia. This is a moment in time where we can make a dramatic difference for all Philadelphians, but especially those in poverty and in need of a good paying job. We can return to what we were doing before. I think we will get there, but that's not my goal. My goal is to do way better than we were doing before. We know we're one of the poorest cities in the country, and we know that since 2009, sadly, we produced twice the U.S. average of jobs that pay below 35000 a year. And we also know that we have the second biggest financial loss of any city. Only Detroit was worse than us. And we also know that of the top cities in the East Coast or the, on the formation of black and brown businesses, we're the lowest by far. And we're also the lowest for white businesses. We also know that for existing businesses to grow jobs here, our ability to grow jobs is hindered by the fact that our business taxes are almost double every other city except one, New York. This hurts us in growing jobs. And this is why when you look at the suburbs of Philadelphia, their employment is far exceeds the city of Philadelphia, while all other cities on the East Coast, the majority of the city's employment exceeds the suburbs. So my comments today are really, if we're serious about tackling poverty and creating good paying jobs, this is our time. With the money coming to us from the federal government, we need to produce these family sustaining jobs and make sure that money is utilized. So this is the time for us, in my opinion, to be as bold as we possibly can. It's not acceptable to me to return to what we were before, but to be better. We still have this chance, so I just hope we can take advantage of it. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council Chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Hey, thank you, Council President. I just wanted to um, thank my colleague, um, Councilman Curtis Jones, for acknowledging some of the work that we're doing regarding uh, reimagining development that's taking place throughout the Second Councilmatic District. And as a result, we're looking at um, the blocks of Christian Street in South Philadelphia. It's known now as graduate hospital area, but we have um, learned over the last several months that um, there were several historical houses built by an African-American architect called Julian Abel. He's a graduate from University of Pennsylvania. And a lot of his houses that he had built along Christian Street, which are, which are known as um, African-American Doctors Row, um, some of them have been slated for redevelopment. And so as a result, we began looking at um, the preservation of historical landmarks along um, Christian Street in South Philadelphia, which a significant amount of prominent African Americans who have lived in that particular area um, throughout the ages, as well as First African Baptist Church also was along that corridor as well. And so we will be also approaching the Preservation Alliance for official designation uh, regarding African American um, road during along this particular um, street slash corridor. So um, thank you. Councilman Jones for just acknowledging the work that we're doing. Also, um, thank you for setting the tone because um, I've paid attention to the work that you have done regarding the preservation of landmarks in your particular district. And just wanted to say thank you for the acknowledgement of the work that we're doing. Thank you very much, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. Um, any additional speeches on behalf of the majority and minority? <laughs> There being none, the uh, chair now recognizes Councilman Jones for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that city council stand adjourned until Thursday, May 27, 2021, at 10 a.m. Second. Thank you. It is voted and seconded that the council stand adjourned until Thursday, May 27, 2021, at 10 a.m. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you all very much and please be safe. Thank you.